Hi, my name is Geeske van Woerden and I would like to explain to you the research that we will do in the coming two years thanks to the support of the Angelman Syndrome Foundation. So our overall research project entails two major aspects. First, we would like to identify a reliable cognitive behavioral task in which Angelman syndrome mice show a pronounced phenotype. This will allow us to use this task for the screening of new drugs that could treat the intellectual disability. Second, we will test to what extent we can reverse those cognitive deficits in adult mice. So at this moment, the most often used learning task to assess the cognitive abilities in Angelman syndrome mice is the Morris water maze, where unfortunately these mice show a rather mild phenotype. This makes it pretty difficult for us to, to find clear improvements upon reinstatement of the UB3A gene or upon drug testing. Therefore, we will subject the Angelman syndrome mice to a list of specific tasks that all require cognitive abilities and see if these mice have difficulties in these tasks. Identifying such a deficit is of great help to screen for new drugs. If a particular task stands out, among others, as more difficult to learn, we will then use another mouse model to activate the UB3A gene in the adult life stage. We will then re-evaluate the mouse's ability to learn that specific learning task once UB3A gene is activated. This will help us understand eventually the chances for cognitive or learning improvement if UB3A is restored in a certain life stage. So the ultimate goal of all Angelman syndrome research is to try to develop therapeutics that are really going to help the individual with Angelman syndrome. And towards this end, we use Angelman syndrome model mice that can recapitulate certain features of Angelman syndrome. For example, Angelman syndrome model mice exhibit seizures, and they also have motor dysfunction. So we can leverage these to try to identify therapeutics that can help in these domains. So what are potential drugs that might correct the motor deficits or that might correct the seizures? And then we can examine this in a preclinical setting and then try to bring this to a clinical setting to directly help individuals with Angelman syndrome. Now, a challenge has been in the Angelman syndrome mice traditionally haven't shown very strong cognitive phenotypes. And that's why I'm really excited by the work that Geiska in the Netherlands has proposed in that she's going to be looking at a whole domain and a whole series of, of cognitive behavioral tests in the Angelman syndrome model mice to try to identify phenotypes, behavioral phenotypes, that are extremely reproducible in the Angelman syndrome model mice so that it can be used for preclinical studies to vet different therapeutics and see which ones can improve cognitive function. So the goal of this work is to identify these different behavioral studies, different behavioral um, uh, tests that can be used um, in a preclinical setting that can then identify therapeutics that can be taken to the clinic and then eventually help individuals with Angelman syndrome and to help correct uh, the cognitive dysfunction that goes along with that disorder. So I think the work that Heiske is proposing is really amazing and extremely important, very therapeutically relevant.